when you start poking into Japanese retro games, there's a title that comes up an awful lot. Druaga. If you've got a really good memory, you might go, wasn't that an arcade game? Tower of Druaga never got a lot of attention in the United States. In Japan, though, Tower of Druaga is one of the foundational video games. In August 1985, this was the reason to get a Famicom. You control Gil, the Golden Knight, climbing to the top of Draga's tower to rescue his love, Kai, who has been turned into a stone. Not turned to stone, turned into a stone. Every floor in the tower is a maze, and Gil has to collect a key to unlock the door to the next floor. Naturally, there are monsters wandering the floors, too. Gil has a sword, but he doesn't just swing it out. You hold down the attack button and he'll hold it in front of him. He also possesses a shield that can block magic spells. When the sword is held out, then the shield is held to his left. The starting position for Gil, the key, the exit door, and the monsters are all randomized every time you play. The maze layouts, on the other hand, remain consistent. The tower has 60 floors, a number that was selected to match the height of the tallest building in Japan when it was made. You almost definitely won't be clearing that without continuing. The true challenge of Juraga, however, are the treasures. Every stage has a treasure, and you'll have to collect most of them in order to complete the game. The treasure chest will appear where Gil starts on a level, and all he has to do to get it is walk over it. Then the question becomes, how do you get the chest to appear? And the answer is that it's something different and special on every stage. It might be something that you just stumble onto playing naturally. Like on the first stage, the chest appears when you kill the slime monsters. You'll probably do that anyways. Later floors tend to have more esoteric requirements, like stand on the door and then start killing all the monsters on the floor. You can always go on without collecting the treasure from a floor, but most of the treasures are needed to do things like fight the monsters, pass through barriers, or even see some obstacles. You're going to get stymied pretty quickly unless you start collecting them. And that's kind of the intention of Tower of Druaga. You're supposed to be keeping notes, working out how to collect each treasure, and talking with your friends on the playground to see what they've figured out. Or I suppose you could use a guide. The manual actually has no detail on the treasures. So you are on your own to figure out what they do. But I'm here. I can tell you some of them. The pickaxe is the treasure you'll find on the first floor. If you stand still in front of a wall and press the attack button, you'll knock the wall down. It can only be used a certain number of times per floor before it's destroyed. It refreshes between floors though, so you can keep using it. The boots on the second floor double your walking speed. Gil moves pretty slow without them and you don't have enough time to complete later stages without them. Naturally, stronger swords will let you defeat enemies more quickly. The candles make ghosts visible. Without the appropriate one, they'll be shooting at you and you won't see them coming. There's a few different types of potions in the game. Some of them increase your strength for just that floor, some of them weaken you for just that floor. Some will give you an extra life. And some are required in order to open up chests on other floors. Now let's talk about monsters and how to fight them. Gil has hit points, but you can't see them on screen. When you have your sword out and you run over a monster to defeat it, Gil also loses a bit of his health. It replenishes between floors and with enemies defeated, 
So it only becomes a real concern if you haven't been collecting items like new swords and armor. An important thing about the monsters is that there are different versions of them. I think this might be the first Famicom game where they palette swap an enemy and give it different abilities. Slimes are the simplest enemy. They're kind of pokey and they jiggle a little bit before they move one square. Some of the tougher slimes can cast spells though. Knights move a lot more quickly and have a shield out. Gil does more damage to them when he hits them in the back too. Wizards are the worst. They appear, cast a spell, and then disappear in a matter of seconds. If you have your sword out and a wizard appears in front of you, you're already dead. You can hit them while they're fading in and out, but it's very difficult to catch the wizards to hit them. More powerful wizards may leave a pillar of fire behind, or could smash through walls. Ghosts are mobile wizards that are invisible unless you have the candle. They can also pass through walls. On later floors, you'll encounter dragons and, of course, Druaga himself. Tower of Druaga is a pretty big game and it's hard to complete. I recorded for about an hour to get this footage and I think I wound up at 4.14. I might have been able to make it further if I was willing to abandon the treasures, but I was thinking, how hard could it be? Naturally, Tower of Draga gets a lot of sequels, but the only one that matters for our purposes is Quest of Kai, a pretty good prequel that we'll be seeing much later. I'm of two minds on Tower of Draga. I like it conceptually, and I recognize its historical significance, but the rough edges on it are really rough. Having to hold the sword out makes any kind of level with wizards on it just a nightmare, and it's got a bit of a maneuverability problem where you can't easily rotate Gil's facing unless he's in the intersection. Tower of Draga was a game for a cultural moment, and that moment has passed. I think it's good to check out because it is so significant, but I also think that someone coming to it without nostalgia probably isn't going to get a lot of fun out of it. 